them that love him for the good of them who are called according to his purpose our address physical services 106 9th road king in johannesburg my number is plus two seven eight two four five six nine two six four you shall surely be blessed may god bless you and i look forward to receiving you amen Praise God, praise God, hallelujah. You are welcome tonight. This is Abi Adenigba, the pastor of Shekinah Fellowship Ministry right here in Johannesburg, South Africa. And I want to welcome you tonight, especially, and to welcome you to this new month of November. What a gracious month to come into. We give thanks unto the Lord for the past 10 months, and now we are in the 11th month. All glory to God, and we appreciate what he has been doing in our life from the beginning of this year, 2022. And I also want to congratulate you that you have made it to the month of November. And surely, God will remember you in this month of November for all that you have believed in for, which you have not received or you have not seen in the name of Jesus. So I'm so glad to be with you to, tonight. And uh, I want to pray that this month of November uh, will be a month that, you know, the chains, the chains holding back your testimony for this year shall be broken. And the yoke that is pressing upon you shall be broken, shall be destroyed by fresh anointing. To finish this year very well with testimony that you shall surely finish this year strong in the name of Jesus. So I thank you for tuning in with me tonight on Faith Conversation. And I say tonight you will gain more revelation of faith as the Lord will speak through me unto your life tonight, and to the situations, and to what may be bothering your mind, you know, as a believer, or you are yet to believe. But I say tonight, you shall believe in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so today, we, we're going to look at our conversation on faith. Um, you know, faith is everything in Christianity. It's a lifestyle. Faith is is a lifestyle of a Christian person, and we have to continually discuss faith and share the word about faith. You know, the, the epistle to the Romans says, in Romans 10, 17, as you may know, if you are with your Bible there, or I'll, I'll read for you, you know, uh, um, Romans 10, 17 it says that faith comes by hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ Jesus. I like this version. This is NIV version. It says faith comes by hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. And he is, the Bible says, he is the is our pillar, he is the author and finisher of our faith. It says that, you know, he, he is the author of our faith. So it begins with him. It begins with Christ Jesus. And that's why you need to receive him as your Lord and Savior. And he's waiting for you to perfect your expectation in the name of Jesus. And so we're saying today that um, faith, why faith and action together? That's what I want to share with you tonight. Why faith and action together? Some we ask, must my faith always come together with action? I will say, yes. I would say yes, because, you know, faith is imputed in you through the word that you receive, through the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Faith is imputed in you as a spirit by the experience of those who give testimonies or those who were commended for their faith. And so the, the, the faith is, is it's a spirit. That's why it's described as the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the eyes to see what you believe God to do in your life, even though you are yet to see it. But faith says it's already there for you. It says it's already there for you. And so we're going to look at it today because what is there for you needs you to walk towards this. Praise God. You know, God had promised the people of Israel prophetically that there is a promised land and they had to walk towards the promised land. They did not remain in Egypt. And I want to say today, I want to lift you up from any Egypt experience you are going through, either the lack of work or financial problems, you know, barrenness, um, unfruitful career, unfruitful business. You may need faith and to take it with action and move to something that God is leading you in the name of Jesus. And so, must faith and action go together? I want to say tonight, yes, Let's look at what the Word of God says concerning faith. As you know, Hebrews chapter 11 is our watchword when we want to define faith. We do not define faith as you will see it in other literary books as, you know, as something good to look forward to. No, faith is defined according to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It said, now faith is confidence. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So faith gives you the assurance of what you have not seen. It gives you the assurance of what God has said concerning you, concerning this situation, the promise of God for your life. And that's why the, 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 the version that I read for you also, the same from NIV says, that faith comes by hearing the message and hearing the message of Christ Jesus. And so faith is given to you by divine word of God not by the information that you receive in the world. Not the information, not by the promises of the government. No, we're saying faith is released, is imputed into you. And once you receive it, in the context of what you believe God for, you need to take actions with it. And that's what we want to deal with. So really, your faith must come with action. Praise God. Now, let's now go and look at James. James. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus. He wrote to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Now, in chapter 2 of the epistle of James, and I'll read for you from verse 14. It says, What good is it my brother, brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds. Now, the word deeds is the same as the word action. The word deeds also can mean an evidence. Just like, you know, you have a title deed, the title deed provides the evidence that you own the property. And that's what faith is. That faith must bring you into the reality that you own what God has said about you. That you are in life, you are in expectation of what God has said about you. So, and it must come with the, with the deeds, with the action, with the behavior of someone of faith. And I'll read further. It says, can such faith save them? 
If someone says, claims to have faith, but has no deeds, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. Verse 16, if one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does not nothing, but does nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? And it, it gave us that, you know, simple illustration. It to say someone says, I have no, and I have no clothes, I have no food, it's winter out there. And then you say, oh, go where? Well, go and feed. But you did not accompany them with anything to keep them warm, to make them strong. Then that means it's, your help is nothing. And so it is that you receive faith by the word of God. You receive faith to be the head and not the tail, but you remain where you are. You are not going to be the head. You receive the word of God that says, you know, only you will be above and not beneath, but you move nowhere. You receive the word of God that says, you shall be a lender and not a borrower, but you make no move as to earn some income, as to engage yourself in some trade, either buying and selling, either looking for a peace job or a work. So, your faith that you receive from the word of God is not in tandem to what God has promised you. So, that's why your faith must come with action. So it is, if you believe God for healing, you must exercise that faith in the word of God that says to you, by his stripes, you are healed. You need to take the step of faith. You need to put actions to it. And so, faith comes with action. It must be together. Again, James continued to say in verse 17, he said, in the same way, faith by itself, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, it's dead. It's dead. Just like you, somebody came to you without clothes, without food and all that, and you did not show love, then your, your faith is dead. Your love is, is dead because there was no accompanying action. And so he tried to say to us here that the same thing with faith, that if your faith is just standing and you did not put some work to it, you did not make some move, that faith is dead. I will say tonight, that faith is fake. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's important for you to know that the faith that you receive by the word of God, by the impartation of your pastor, by the impartation of the apostles and prophet, requires you to put some work to it. And that's what makes it necessary in this conversation that your faith must come with action with works. Amen. Now, we read a story. I'll come back to James. I want to give you one illustration. In Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, just to see how faith must come with action. Now, in, in, in Matthew chapter 25, it's a parable and Jesus gave this insight on parable on the, the things, the timing of the kingdom of heaven. And he gave this parable of the ten virgins. He says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. 
The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Now, this can also help you to understand that, you know, when you receive the good news, the gospel, when you receive the good news, you receive the message of the word of God, and you you receive it and you believe, oh, okay, I have faith in what the pastor has said. I have faith in the message of today. But then the, 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 the word of promise that was released to you, yes, gave you faith. And then you now said, I'm going to wait for God, what God is going to do in my life. I believe God I'm healed. I believe God that my financial situation will be settled. But then, when you look at this parable, it resonates with faith and action. Now, the Bible says here that these ten, the five were foolish, the five were wise. He said, but not all of them took oil in jars along with their lamp. So, the bride was the bridegroom was long time in coming, was delaying, and they all became drowsy. It was delaying. So it can be that what you are praying for, what you have prayed for, or what you have received faith about is not yet appearing to you. The fact that it's not appearing to you or is not manifesting, it should not stop you from having and actions towards it, making certain preparation towards it, developing capacity towards it, or making some preparations. It's, it works. And so those five who were foolish never had preparation. They didn't even bother to have extra oil in their lamp. Let's look at it, that story again, the parable. It said, at midnight, the cry rang out, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. Verse 8, Matthew 25, verse 8, said, The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some oil. Our lamps are going out. You see, they never had preparation. They never took any frantic steps to get ready for the manifestation of what God is about to do. I can put it that way. And so they, they, they said to them, verse 9, No, they replied, There may not be enough for us, for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some of your, for yourself. You know, that, that, that is... They, 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 they just said, no, we cannot share what we've got. Go out there and get for yourself. Now, something interesting there, in verse 10 of Matthew 25, in this parable, it says, but while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Now, there are certain things we mustn't we, we must leave when we have received faith. We need to take action with it. We need to take action with it. And so we, we can see there that these other five were now running around at a later time. And it was too late. And I pray it will never be too late for you. What you have believed God for and you have the faith begin to take, make steps, begin to make steps. They said there's a Chinese proverb that says that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. And so the faith to see the wonders of God, the faith to get the reward of what you have believed God for begins with a step, with certain action, with certain practices, either with small business, 
either with one business or one shop or one small business you are you are doing or one trade, even for believing God for your healing, the action you may need to take for your faith to get completely healed might be the action to restrain yourself from, from what is not good for your body. The action may be for you to, to have a new dietary you know, uh, behavior. That may be the action you need to take with your healing, for, 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 with your faith for complete healing. Because you know, having a lifestyle adjustment is also part of works. It's also part of action to be completely healed. And I want to tell you that your faith will not fail if you take actions with it. Amen. I'm on faith conversation, trying to simplify the understanding of faith and how it works. Last week I mentioned the word. I said faith is not magic. Faith is not magic. It requires your partnership with the Almighty God who makes all things perfect. Now, while I used the parable of the ten virgins, when you look at their behavior, they did not make any step with the information or with the, with the message of the kingdom, with the, the announcement of the day of the Lord. They did nothing. And that also brings me to a point procrastinating. Procrastinating delays your action of faith. Procrastinating is postponing. You cannot postpone what to do when you have received a revelation of what God is able to do for you. You cannot postpone it. And so procrastinating delays the actions of faith. Those ten virgins, the five of them that were foolish, procrastinated the arrival of the bridegroom. They procrastinate the arrival of the bridegroom. They heard the information. And it's just like, you know, uh, um, you, you are being told about the, the economy of this world, that things may not get right. And you've been preached to that it's time you knew the Lord with your giving. It's time you knew the Lord with your thoughts. So that in that day, your own situation will be different. Because there's always, the Bible says, when the heaven is full, when the cloud is full, it shall surely pour rain. And so it is. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. And it says that he that observes the wind will not do anything. You cannot carry the word of God the word seed of God, the revelation, the insight of the divine and not put action towards it. You need to have your faith with action. You need to have your faith with action. So, the same thing. Now, look at the story of a certain man um, in, 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 in Luke, I believe, in John chapter 5, they said this man has been sick or lame for 38 years, quite a long time. He had faith, but he went to the same water, Bethesda water or Bethesda pool, but you know, he, he didn't have the capacity. They only helped him to the bank of the water. Other people find their level. And so you can see how someone can be paralyzed with their faith. He had faith, but he was paralyzed in that faith. Now, he met Jesus. And what the Lord said to him was that, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? He received the word. He, he wanted to give excuses. But the word came, do you want to get well? There are words that will come to us at a particular time, that we impute faith in us, it also requires that we respond immediately to see the wonders of God. That we respond. There are seasons that will come 
that those season needs our response in that season. The season of certain words, the season of what God is doing, it needs your response. And this response is also taking action with the word that you have received. And so we saw in, in John chapter 5 that the man, you know, rose up. He has to, he, he rose up and there he got his healing. And so it's so important for us to understand that our faith needs our corresponding action, faith, activity that goes towards what you believe God for. Let me use the word activities because activities, they are actions. They are things that you are doing. It might be a petty trade. It might be just, you know, taking a walk of exercise while you have believed God that you are healed. It also requires you to have those activities, you know, you know, there's, you know, that, that justifies, you know, that yes, your faith is alive to see yourself completely whole. Now, going back to, going back to the, the, the epistle of James, because um, it's such an epistle that we need to study when we're talking about, you know, faith must be with action. In verse 18 of James chapter 2, he says, But someone will say, You have faith. I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Verse 19 says, You believe that there is one God, even the demons also believe. And I want to show you something here that he made an example of those whose action of faith made them to experience the supernatural blessings of God. Now he says in verse 21, he says, Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. You see that his faith and his actions were working together. Amen. His faith and actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. His faith was made complete by what he did. And I'm saying to you that you know, you, you, you are a child of faith. You, you have faith. You believe what may be remaining for you to experience the, 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 the blessings of God is for you to take action with what you believe God, what you have faith. And we saw here that Abraham was made complete by what he did. He was made complete by what he did. And the scripture says in verse 23, the scripture says, James chapter 2, verse 23, that's where I am. And the scripture says in verse 23, was that was fulfilled, said, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. It was credited to him by righteousness. He believed God and it was credited to him by righteousness. And he was called God's friend. And James, James elaborated and said in verse 24, he said, you see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. He, Abraham was considered righteous by what he did. He believed God. He moved on into actions. And so James explained this to us. And I love the book of James. And in this, you know, sort of amenutics that I, I'm giving you today, you need to understand that your faith must become part of you, must become practical, must become your expression in every aspect. 
and you will see God working for you. Now, James' illustration of faith is emphatic on taking works. James is emphatic on taking action with your faith. Now, when you study Hebrews, like Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 to 40, he defines faith. The writer defines faith as confidence in what we hope for and evidence of what we have not seen. However, the writer of Hebrew was emphatic on those who made exploits of faith to please God. They made exploits of faith, or rather exploit faith to please God, and were commended. They were commended. But when you now compare to James, James gave the revelation that the secret of their exploits, of their making exploits of faith, was the action. Was the action. So sometimes when you want to be, um, you know, uh, theologically discourse and, and looking at, you know, this critically, you want to say, did James use the book of Hebrew or Hebrew, the writer of Hebrew used James. But Hebrew, Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews is, is the, the, the argument around it is the exact writer is not known. But I, I wish I'm in a class to argue that perhaps James wrote Hebrew. But we want to believe that Paul wrote Hebrew, but the argument continues. But no matter what, it's an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's been given to us as instruction. It's been given to us. Whoever writes it or whoever wrote it is not my point of view. My point of view is that faith, the people made exploits of faith and they pleased God and they got their reward. And they were commended. And James taught us and said, they were commended. They made the exploits because it came with action. And that's how we're going to be looking at it tonight. And I want to encourage you that don't be in isolation of saying, I have faith, I trust God. It requires that you make some steps. It requires that you, 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 you do some works around it. And as I wrote, the, the Holy Spirit also explained to me that the action is the evidence of your obedience to the word of faith. The action is the evidence of your obedience to the word of faith. So if you believe the word, your faith transcends into action to experience the wonders of God. Your faith transcends into action to experience the wonders of God. And that's why you need your faith must come with words. We saw in the life of Abraham in Genesis chapter 22, even James already referred to it, that, you know, by his action, by his obedience to offer Isaac, it was accounted to him as righteous, righteousness rather. And so you need to begin to reevaluate your life with faith. Is your life in faith, is it isolated? Or your faith is isolated in you and you are not making a move? I don't know what your challenges are. No matter what your challenges are, there are corresponding action that you can take so that those challenges can go away. It might be sickness. It might be financial challenges. It may be problems in the family. It may be a problem at work. Do you want to have a behavioral change as to see the hand of God in what you do? Do you want to see the financial blessings of God 
the financial blessings of God. I'm not talking about your end of the month salary. I'm talking about the financial blessings of God, which is dependent on your obedience. Your obedience in giving, your obedience in fighting, your obedience in seed sowing into the right soil, into the right lives, into the right project of the kingdom of God. There you will experience the supernatural blessings of God financially. Financial favor will come upon your life, but it requires your action if you believe it. It requires your, your attitude if you have such faith to be a financial giant or to have financial independence. And so I want to just say tonight that your faith must certainly come with actions with words, with, with deeds, with works. Faith is not a pretense. Faith comes with the evidence that yet, that which I hope for, the evidence of things I have not seen, my actions, my deeds are showing, they are proofs that I am expectant. That's what action does for you. Every step that you take, that's what action is. And you shall surely connect with your breakthrough. This year will not run out without you giving thanks unto God. You still have many days left in this year to see the mighty hand of God in what you believe in for from the beginning of this year. It may be that you, were, you have been silent, you have been quiet, perhaps... It may be that you have been disobedient with your faith. Because where there's disobedience, there will be no action. And as I've said, as I round up, that this faith and action, the action is the evidence of your obedience to the word of faith. May God bless you. This has been Abiy Adenigba. I'm the pastor of Shekinah Fellowship Ministry. And I thank you for watching. I thank you for joining me tonight. And I pray that the word that I've shared with you tonight, we, we bless you. Replay it, listen to it again, and you will begin to see changes. You will begin to see miracles. You will begin to, you know, do, see things that you thought is never going to be and it's coming to be. And you will have rest in the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. May God bless you. And I'll see you again by the will of God. We'll see you again as God will bring other insight about faith that we need to consider in the upper week. God bless you, and i see you again. Amen. Have a wonderful month of November. I pray that this month God will surely remember you. But make a move. Take some action in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. He has died for you to remove condemnation from your life.